Welcome to the PMW 200 Introductory Course, brought to you by your friendly TSW staff. In this course, we'll be going over the basics of how to pass our PMW 200 competency test. We'll also be going over some additional features that will be helpful when you are out in the field. Let's get started. First, we'll need to set up the camera on our tripod. To do that, secure the tripod plate to the bottom of the PMW and lock it in place on the tripod. As always, make sure the camera is locked down, level, and secure before you continue. Next, let's turn the camera on. Grab the battery and put it into the camera. To do so, line the metal contacts facing down. When placing the battery in, you will press down until it snaps into place. If you need to release the battery, there is a small push button above. Now, let's put our SD card into the camera. Grab the card adapter and your SD card. Connect it to the adapter like so. To connect the adapter to the camera, place it arrow first into the rear of the camera in slot A like so. When you turn the camera on, a green light will turn on above slot A. To turn on the PMW200, you flip this switch above the battery slot to the left. But before we start recording, let's go over the camera from front to back. To start off, open the LCD screen on top of the camera. Next, to open the shutter, flip the switch on the left side of the lens to the open position. Now, let's look at the buttons and functions on the side of the camera. To start off, located towards the front of the lens is the focus ring. This is adjusted left and right to focus your picture. Push this ring forward for autofocus and back for manual focus. This is tied with the manual autofocus switch located here. If you have this switch on manual focus in autofocus mode, then you will still be using the manual focus. It is not recommended to use autofocus. Next up is the zoom function located behind the focus ring. The switch to change from auto zoom to manual zoom is located under the lens. Switch to servo mode to use the rocker switches located on the right and top side of the camera. Switch to manual to use the zoom ring. Do not use this ring when in servo mode or you could break the camera. Now that we've looked at our zoom controls, let's look at how to properly focus on your subject. In order to focus the shot, zoom in as far as you can on your subject and adjust the focus. Once focused, zoom out and frame your shot. If you move any distance from your subject, then refocus. Peaking is a feature on the camera and is also helpful for this process. We'll touch on that later. Next up at the base of the lens is the iris control. The iris controls the amount of light that comes through the lens. The iris can be switched from manual to auto using this switch. In manual mode, you adjust the aperture using the ring on the base of the lens. The numbers on the iris ring are called f-stop numbers. The smaller the number, the larger the aperture size and the deeper the depth of field. So, if you have the numbers smaller, then the lens will be open more. If you have the numbers larger, then the lens will be open less. When this macro switch is on, you are able to properly shoot an extreme close-up shot, allowing for a deep depth of field. This feature will only work if the focus ring is in the forward position. This is the ND filter. The ND filter is basically sunglasses for the camera. There are three different settings, zero for no ND filter, one is the first setting, and second is the highest setting. The white balance button is located below and to the front of your ND filter. You adjust your white balance by focusing the camera on a white card provided or something solid white and pressing the button. If you get a low or high light warning, adjust your lighting and or exposure accordingly and redo your white balance. The purpose of white balancing is to tell your camera what the color white is in the setting that you are shooting in. Your white balance will be different depending on the lighting source you are using. If you are using the sun, then that is completely different than using a man-made lighting source like a light bulb. So if you move from inside to outside, then you need to white balance your camera. The shutter switch here can be turned on to change the shutter speed settings. The gain located here amplifies the video signal to brighten the shot. There are three settings, low, medium, and high. 
The default setting should be low, but always check before shooting. Setting the gain too high will result in grainy footage. Next, we'll take a look at the five assigned buttons. The first button is preset for the zebra function. When the zebra function is on, you can see the overexposed areas of your shot. This helps when adjusting exposure. The zebra function is set up for skin tones. What this means is that when adjusting for your subject, you want your iris level to be where the zebras just come off their face. Button two is preset for the peaking function. When this is on, you will be able to see what is in focus. The remaining three have no preset functions. The full auto button activates the auto iris, auto gain, auto shutter, and auto white balance. We do not recommend that you use this function. The picture profile button has six picture profile options for you to customize. Now, getting into audio, the PMW comes with a shotgun mic as well as a wireless mic kit. To connect a shotgun mic to the camera, place it in the shotgun mount. Then plug the XLR cable from this microphone into the camera, making sure it is secure. Each channel has a corresponding switch underneath. Each switch has three settings, line, mic, and mic plus 48 volts or phantom power. For the shotgun mic, you want to set the switch to phantom power. For the wireless kit, you want to set it to mic because it has its own power source. On the left side of the camera are your audio controls. For each channel of audio, you have three different settings that you need to set. First is your audio in selection switch. With this switch, you can choose between your internal and external audio sources. If you select the internal setting, you'll be using the internal microphone. We highly recommend that you do not use this microphone. Always use the external setting when not using this microphone. The second switch is your auto and manual volume control. If you have this on auto, your audio will automatically be set to the levels preset in the camera. We do not recommend that you use this setting. When set to manual, you can control your audio levels with the dial to the right of the switch. Ideally, your audio should never be on the red on your audio meter in the LCD screen. It should be peaking about three quarters of the way across. Looking at the top of your camera, you can see a variety of buttons. These are your playback and menu control buttons. There is also another menu button located on the back left side of the camera. You can look at previously recorded clips by clicking the thumbnail button and browsing your media. Looking below this group of controls, you can see one of the zoom controls and one of the two record buttons. The other is located behind the hand strap where your thumb will rest. Now that we have learned the outside of the camera, let's get to the menu. There are two ways to access the menu, one on top of the camera and one on the side. You can navigate using the wheel on the left side or the top navigation buttons. The two main functions you need to know are formatting your card and changing the format of your video. Before you select the card to format, make sure you back up your media on your card because once you format your card, it will delete what is on there. To format your card, first make sure it is in the camera. Next, navigate to the others menu located all the way at the bottom. Then scroll down to format media. Know what slot your card is in and select it. The camera will tell you when this process is done. To set the format you will be recording in, navigate back to the Others menu and look for the submenu system. Under that submenu, you will have four settings, Country, UDF or FAT, HD and or SD, and Format. Country should be set to NTSC, while FAT should also be selected. Next, you have the option to either record in high definition and or standard definition. We recommend HD unless you are shooting for something that requires SD. Lastly, depending on what quality you are using, you have different format options. The three general formats that we use are HD 1920x1080 and either 23.98 Progressive, 29.97 Progressive, or 59.94 Interlaced. The PMW camera bag has specific pouches for each piece of equipment included with the PMW. The Velcro side of the bag contains a battery charger and two batteries. The zipper side of the bag contains the sleet, shotgun, SD card adapter, wireless kit, which includes a receiver, body pack, and plug-in, a lens pen, and a marker. The middle of the bag contains the white card, PMW 200 camera, and headphones. 
and a diagram of all the equipment and where it goes. Always make sure the equipment is in there and in the right spots when you return it. And when you're done packing, just double check for the white balance card. This has been a technical service window production on the basics of the PMW 200.